Bonjour! You no, know, right? What on earth happened to my face? I don't know, I just woke up like this. Episode 2 of the Emma Watson a thon, and today I will be watching Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. And this film has always been one of my least favorite Harry Potters. Don't exactly know why. Um, maybe it's just the setting and the story that doesn't really speak to me like the other films. However, when I rewatched it last year, I actually found myself quite enjoying it. And I think I even liked it better than Philosopher's Stone. So I'm looking forward to it. I liked Philosopher's Stone very much uh, when I saw it a couple of days ago. And if I will like Chamber of Secrets even better this time as well, then yeah. I'm going to have a good time, I think. But as always, I'll let you know what I thought of it after I have seen the film. I'm back! And man, did it not disappoint. This movie is really good. I wouldn't say it's better than Philosopher's Stone, but it's really good. Let's start from the beginning. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is the second film in the eight-parted Harry Potter saga. It is about Harry Potter who returns to his wizarding school Hogwarts and discovers that there is a plot to open the mysterious Chamber of Secrets and set free the monster that lives inside of it. This movie definitely has a more complicated plot than Philosopher's Stone and I guess that's kind of logical because Philosopher's Stone needed to set up this Wizarding World, kind of like an origin movie, while Chamber of Secrets could just start immediately without setting anything up. And also the stories are written to grow as the audience grows, so I guess it's logical that the movie is a bit more complicated and a bit less childish. In other words, this movie can afford to have a bit more of a complex plot, while Philosopher's Stone had to set up all these things. And I think when I was a kid, I didn't really comprehend what was happening in this film, while I definitely did while watching Philosopher's Stone. But I'm all for more complex stories. There was an excellent plot twist in the end, and there was so much payoff for things that were set up early and it all worked out pretty well. The music is once again phenomenal. John Williams, this is one of your best works, and I really regret that you stopped doing the Harry Potters after the third one. And I didn't touch on it last episode, but the visuals in these films are just... especially the shots with the castle and the seasons changing, and the Great Hall, everything just looks beautiful. There is one thing I remember from the book that I regret not seeing in the film, and that is Sir Nicholas's death day party. It was just so bizarre and weird and fun and creepy a little bit, and it really could have worked quite well in the film, but oh well. Something that I liked more in the film is the little action scene with the car where Harry like falls out of it and he's hanging on to the door and he's like, your, your hands are sweaty, Ron. Uh, in the book that's just a really boring scene where they follow the car and kind of suffocate inside the car because it's so hot. And actually I think that Ford, the flying Ford, might be my favourite part about this film, if not about the series in general? No, no, there's something in the third movie and book that I like more, but it's definitely up there. It's just, oh, that car is so good, so, so good. And also I didn't talk about the Dursleys in the last episode, but they are just wonderfully despicable. I love them. Now let's talk about the actors, uh, just the main characters. Uh, I'm still not a huge fan of Daniel Radcliffe, he improved a bit, but sometimes it still sounds so stiff and odd, and yeah, I, I am a fan of him as an actor now, uh, it, it gets better, but in these first two films it's a little bit awkward sometimes. 
Emma Watson, on the other hand, wow, she improved so, so much between the last film and this one. She still has those moments where she's over-articulating and uh, hammering down every point, but she also managed to pull off some emotional scenes. For example, when she says, he called me a mudblood, that's... yeah, I, I really... I'm convinced that this is an actual girl actually hurting because someone called her a name, and that's great. Uh, I don't think Emma Watson in the first film could have pulled that off. It's so fun seeing these actors grow, uh, not only physically, but also in their actor talents, uh, yeah. And uh, speaking of Emma Watson, I always felt like this is the movie where Hermione is covered the least, and it's always difficult to find a good source for uh, statistics like this, but I found a list on IMDb which rates every character uh, according to how much screen time they have in every film, and uh, it is it is true that Hermione has the least screen time in this film, at least if that list is accurate. But it does kind of feel like that, right? She, she, she's petrified, what, like halfway through the movie, maybe a little over halfway, and she doesn't really do anything until the very very end. But despite not featuring very much, I am I was still impressed by Emma Watson's performance. So in total I'm going to give this film an 8 out of 10, just like Philosopher's Stone. I didn't think it was much better, but it also definitely wasn't worse. I, they're like almost the exact same level. In other words, a perfect sequel. Next episode, I will be watching Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, so do join me for that, and I will see you then. Goodbye.